This is the Operation Flying Plate, when Brazilians were invaded by strange flying saucers in 1977. Section 51 Hi everyone, what's up? I am Dos Geek, back here with you and Section 51 in a new video. Big thanks again for your support to the channel. As usual, like, share, subscribe, hit that bell button to be notified every time a new video is published. Watch this video until the end. And now, let's get started. Operation Flying Plate spanned over the years of 1977 and 1978, providing around 2,000 pages with observations on site done by the Brazilian Air Force, 500 pictures and 16 hours of relevant video material with various flying saucers and bewildering eyewitness testimonies. Due to the authoritative military regime at that time, this hard-to-believe report transited only through the hands of high-rank military officials. But after decades of silence, it also became available to the general public since 2004. It was the autumn of 1977 when rumors began spreading across Brazil about the residence of a few marginal settlements in the Amazonian basin that had literally been invaded by strange flying devices with the ability to submerge. The UFOs seen over the Maharaj Bay region had various shapes and sizes, ranging from disks and cylinders to pyramids, and a later report even mentioned something about a 300 feet long, almost 100 meters, barrel-shaped mothership. The strange devices displayed an aggressive behavior towards the fishermen and had soon spread to the rest of the villagers. Nobody was spared by the attackers, who were predominantly active during night time. Some people were mostly caught off guard by a vivid beam of light that would paralyze them, followed by another reddish beam presumably used to collect blood samples. The story of a terrified woman appears inside the recently declassified report. A resident of Bahia do Sol recalled how, on October 18, 1977, a powerful light had flooded her room all of a sudden and she could see a green light that was scanning her face and felt the air eating up around her. Before realizing what was happening, the light turned red and a peculiar being, like a man, wearing something like a driver's outfit, was pointing something like a gun at her. It was boiling hot when it touched her breast, causing great pain as if there were needles piercing her skin. Pinching marks similar to mosquito bites were carved into the skin of the victims, and so the attackers were dubbed Chupa Chupas due to their airy, vampiric nature. The nocturnal attacks proceeded for months, and the locals from all nearby fishing villages were affected. Reports of submersible devices pulling people into the water had also started to surface. It was then when the military detached a special air force unit led by Captain Urang Bolivar Suarez Noguera de Holanda Lima to look closely into this matter. Holanda was skeptical at first, but during the night, the UFOs would reveal themselves, allowing the Air Force squad to take pictures and establish a report. The unusual appearances were more real than the captain had suspected, and soon turned him from a naysayer into a believer. He then acknowledged the extraplanetary activity that was going on in that corner of the Amazon and forwarded a report expressing his newly acquired beliefs, coupled with some hard evidence to the base commander in Belém. The outcome had Olenda put in charge of the most ample UFO operation in written history, encompassing dozens of field experts and photographers that stormed the affected villages in the Amazon basin in search of additional answers. The Operation Flying Plate 
Over 300 locals were interviewed and numerous sketches depicting flying discs had been collected. The abundance of material that had been gathered during the first months of 1978 offered the Brazilian military the craved answers. Because of the military dictatorship, Operation Plate was instantly classified and studied by the military officials in the following years. Numerous researchers were appointed to solve this complex enigma, but the end conclusions were never released to the public, not even after the official report had been declassified in 2004. A couple of decades after the Chupa Chupa case, Captain Hollanda decided to share some insight that he was not allowed to speak until then. And during an interview with Brazilian UFO magazine's editor, he unveiled never-before-heard stories from this top-secret mission that he had been assigned to carry during the late 70s. He depicted an actual UFO invasion of the eastern coast of Brazil. Unfortunately, Hollanda's heroic disclosure waited too much even for the newly instituted democratic regime, and so the former Air Force officer had to be silenced. All these stories scared me a lot, because I had never heard anyone speak about such things. When I heard of such cases, I was both worried and even more curious. These people seemed to be sincere. For example in one case, a woman claimed she saw a green light shining in the sky. The lady was half asleep, until, after that, a red ray that left the UFO reached her left breast. It was strange that in the majority of the cases the people were hit at their left side. There was more, exactly at the time where we were speaking of this, a girl came to us and said, Look at the thing that is passing above. When I left the house, I saw the light that the young girl was pointing, flying at a reasonable speed, although the sky was sufficiently covered. It was not very quick, and it blinked as it was going to the north. It looked like a satellite, except that this light turned back on its route, and satellites do not do this. Some victims recovered easily. Others were very terrified. Some have been nauseates, or fell asleep for days. Three months later, he was found dead, strangulated with his own belt. Hollanda's tragic and mysterious demise discouraged all others attempting to trail on Operation Flying Plate. If all this story is true, and apparently considering the number of witnesses and victims, there is a high probability that the, these were actual incidents, it may prove again that governments have knowledge of extraterrestrial visitors and visitations for decades now. But for some reason, they are not telling the public a thing about it. Did you know about Operation Flying Plate until today? These are incredible testimonies. Would it still be possible today to find some of these witnesses to confirm all these revelations? If all these stories are true, who were those aliens? What race were they? What were their intentions? Again, this kind of testimony proves that the UFO phenomenon is international and can affect anyone. Unfortunately, it also highlights our powerlessness towards these beings. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe that you have learned something new. While waiting for the next video, you can find us on social networks, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that bell button and keep supporting Section 51. I'll be back really soon. Open your eyes, watch the sky. Live long and prosper. <laughs>